poner mute a todos porque empezamos en un minuto. Listo. Hola, buenos días a todas y a todos. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí. Estamos en el Congreso de Propiedad Intelectual y el tema de hoy, de esta mañana, es notificación y retirada, la eliminación de contenidos importantes. Para este espacio solamente contamos con 50 minutos en total, lo que significa que vamos a tener una conversación más o menos de eh, media hora por las personas que van a estar de ponentes, lo que significa que tienen solamente 7 minutos para hablar y les voy a pedir ser muy atentas y atento con el tiempo. Eh, voy a tener una musiquita que a partir de los seis minutos y medio va a empezar a sonar y eso significa que tienen 30 segundos para cerrar. Les pido ser muy puntuales y por favor respetar los siete minutos que les corresponde de tiempo. Eh, y bueno, me faltó presentarme. Mi nombre es Marta Tudón, Fui, formo parte del equipo Artículo 19 y yo voy a estar moderando esta sesión. Y bueno, la primera persona panelista es Priscila Ruiz. Ella es abogada en artículo 19. Ella tiene el cargo Here de coordinadora de la Here in Article 19, she is the legal coordinator of this program. Y le doy la palabra program. para que pueda abrir esta sesión. Bienvenida, Priscila, y adelante. Muchas gracias, Marta. Muchas gracias a todos los que eh, están dentro del Congreso de Propiedad Intelectual. Es un gusto poder estar aquí en este espacio y poder presentar este nuevo documento, esta nueva guía que tanto Artículo 19, Oficina México y Centroamérica como la clínica, como la ciberclínica de Harvard Law. Pues hemos, hemos hecho esta eh, importante investigación relacionada a lo que es la figura de notificación y retirada. Este se titula Acceso denegado, cómo pueden responder las y los periodistas y la sociedad civil a las notificaciones de eliminación de contenidos. Y bueno, pues más o menos les voy a dar como una introducción respecto a este documento que hemos creado de manera conjunta con, en, con muchos periodistas. Este, se ha armado con, con, con base en casos y también en colaboración con otras organizaciones y también con expertos en propiedad intelectual. Entonces, más que un, un documento, es una herramienta de ayuda para todos y todas en general que nos lleva de la mano a través del mundo de los derechos de autor en la era digital dentro de la legislación norteamericana. Hace ya un año nos obligó como organización, como parte del artículo 19, a investigar, a conocer a marchas forzadas lo que ahora se conoce como el DMCA, que es el Digital Millennium Copyright Act, que es una legislación que justamente regula los derechos de autor en la era digital. Y con esto, eh, estas marchas forzadas nos ayudaron a, también a poder entender cuál era la situación de los mismos periodistas que estaban transitando sobre un caso de remoción de contenido e incluso hasta el bloqueo total del contenido de los, eh, por parte de los web hosts, donde ahí alojaban todo el contenido de los periodistas. Eh, la impotencia de conocer y dar seguimiento a casos de periodistas que, que de una solicitud de un web host que pedía eliminar su pieza periodística era totalmente incomprensible. No conocían ni se les obligaba a conocer la aplicabilidad de una norma norteamericana a un trabajo de investigación periodístico que nombraba y visualística que nomeaba, implicaba actos de corrupción, violación que no tenía nada que ver con el hecho de recibir una notificación por infringir una política o regla del contrato del web host vinculada a una titularidad del derecho de autor. Sabemos, derecho de autor. Sabemos que todo el trabajo puede ser protegido en el ámbito del derecho de autor. No en tanto, las empresas and the services. la mayoría de los servidores se encuentran en los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica lo cual los vincula obligatoriamente a la legislación del país. Pero, ¿qué pasa con aquellos que alojamos nuestro contenido en servidores de empresas extranjeras? ¿Nos obligamos a cumplir con su legislación relacionada con el DMCA? ¿Qué podemos hacer cuando supuestamente estamos infringiendo o incumpliendo con el Digital Millennium Copyright Act? 
en artículo 19 en Oficina México y Centroamérica, justo con la colaboración de la Clínica de Ciberderecho en la Facultad de Derecho de Harvard, con sede en el Centro Berkeley de Internet y Sociedad, vieron la necesidad de reunir historias, casos de periodistas, de defensores, activistas y en general de la sociedad civil, donde su, conte donde su contenido se viera afectado por esta figura de notificación y retirada, por eh, la ejecución de este DMCA o el Digital Millennium Copyright Act, también conocido en español como la Ley de Derechos de Autor de la Era Digital. El proceso de retirada de la DMCA se diseñó para permitir a los titulares de los derechos de autor a notificar fácilmente a los sitios web de los posibles infractores, como por ejemplo cuando un fan sube una copia de un video mu musical en lugar de vincularla a la página oficial del artista o de la discografía. Sin embargo, en los casos que llegaban a artículo 19, se observó que las personas que trataban de suprimir información llegaban a presentar notificaciones de avisos fraudulentos a los y las periodistas y los y las defensoras y defensores cuyo contenido se alojaba en los sitios web estadounidenses y se retiraba de manera automatizada, sin primero verificar las acusaciones. Se trata también una guía para las y los periodistas, activistas y cualquier integrante de la sociedad civil de Centroamérica y América del Sur interesados en proteger sus derechos a la libertad de expresión y en manera y mantener accesible el contenido en línea. A pesar de que las notificaciones de retirada fraudulenta expuestas por el DMCA que pueden ser objeto de ellas. Aunque el DMCA es una ley estadounidense, se aplica a personas a todo el mundo que utilizan servicios cuya residencia se basa en los Estados Unidos, como es el ejemplo de GoDaddy, Google, Twitter, entre otros. Los proveedores de servicios en sede de los Estados Unidos también suelen notificar en sus términos y condiciones que están cumpliendo con la DMCA y piden a los usuarios que declaren que no publicarán contenido que infrinja los derechos de autor. Al usar el sitio web, usted acepta los términos y condiciones que se compromete a cumplir con todo lo que se dice ahí. Lo preocupante de esta situación es que altera una, un cuidadoso equilibrio entre las protecciones de la libertad de expresión y las protecciones de los derechos de los creadores de contenidos. En general, en los Estados Unidos y en otros países, el derecho de las personas a la libertad de expresión está protegida por la legislación nacional. Esas protecciones tienen ciertos These protection have certain limits included que permiten a los creadores del contenido limitar la capacidad de otras personas que utilizan su trabajo. Sin embargo, cuando la ley de derechos de autor de una jurisdicción como la de Estados Unidos se utiliza de manera ilegítima para bloquear la libre expresión de una persona en otra jurisdicción como México, Brasil, Venezuela, Colombia, a los mexicanos, a los brasileños, a los colombianos, que permiten a los creadores de contenido limitar esta capacidad de otras personas para utilizar su trabajo. Este es uno de los primeros documentos que analiza el contexto latinoamericano. Desde un, de un Están analizados de una perspectiva de, de abordagem de derechos humanos y de la libertad de expresión. Es una contribución y también una homenaje para todos aquellos jornalistas que son defensores de los derechos humanos, activistas de la región latinoamericana, para que se be heard and shared and replicated to leave clear that although in spite of the adversities they will continue to defend the freedom of expression, exercising their vital rights, because if they silence a voice, the echo of this silence becomes more noisy to move other frontiers or borders. Thank you very much, Marta. Muchas gracias, Luis. Thank you, Chris. Now, to continue with the next intervention, I want to welcome Salvador Camacho. Salvador is a founder, member of a... He's the president of Digital WE Foundation, the first NGO in Mexico. Además, a través de su uh, social change and through his Instagram account, and he's also been presented in, has presented in different uh, international forums to talk about internet and freedom of expression. Salvador, you have seven minutes. Hi, Marta and Priscilla. Thank you very much for the invitation. It is a pleasure to be here to talk about this subject that has raised uh, a lot of discussion 
And I think it is totally necessary. And, and, uh, we see increasingly that the cambio de paradigma. paradigma. Every day we have a new device, a new application, a new technology that we can have access to with much uh, relationship. So this means that within the last decades, we have opted to transfer a large number of these activities that we used to do in a, an offline life in order to bring them to a digital uh, plane where the conversation is faster and we have more topics that we are going we are finding out about from the private plane to the public uh, uh, arena which is very important social networks digital platforms have positioned in the last decades uh, the privileged spaces for public opinion and these are spaces that are created by private entities. Anyway, in this last topic about public discussion, we have become citizens, digital citizens, where we have transformed the democratic processes all over the world through these platforms and through these te so technologies. These very important processes socially, such as elections, movements, and social protests, uh, denounces of uh, social acts or homicides, uh, monitoring public health in times of uh, pandemics, uh, among other things. And therefore, every moment we are exercising our human right to the freedom of expression without, regardless of our location. And this has allowed us to have these platforms. Um, in this uh, right that we exercise every day in our individual uh, environment personally and in a more social level the role of journalists and different uh, non-government organizations focused on the uh, advocacy and uh, defense of human rights also digitally are recapping on a very fundamental role because thanks to the work they do is that the public opinion is nourished and they try to disseminate the topics of public interest without a government control, which is a characteristic of a democratic society. And this is how the increase of these digital interactions, different platforms, some countries sometimes trying to regulate and control them, creating different legal mechanisms for their regulation, accompanied by the pressure of these platforms, digital platforms in some, in some cases. In these regards, one of the topics that is more relevant that has come up in the last years in the international plane is a regulation to the right of uh, copyright in virtual media. These treaties with regards to copyrights or IP have been developed not only in the commercial treaties, but at the very beginning, recapping on Berners agreement, we're focused basically on treating IP uh, copyrights as a human right. This is something that we have not, we must not lose sight of. In these treaties, it has been established that the copyright form part of human rights also, because from my point of view, uh, copyright de la is a reflection of the existence of uh, expression freedom. These treaties and these agreements have been discussed and uh, drafted in the different organizations, such as the Intellectual Property Organ World Organization and other agreements, uh, the Berna, Paris, Toya, Toyev uh, agreements, uh, and the Temec also. The recent one that occurred between Mexico, the United States and Canada, which caused a revolution in part of what was being legislated with regards to uh, le um, intellectual property in Mexico. This kind of uh, economic integration agreements have the objective of eliminating obstacles uh, to the trade and are translated in a different legislation in each country. This is why since the 90s, when we celebrated the telecom, the efforts of the three countries that are signatories of this treaty were focused in homologating national laws through these treaties and trying to eliminate at the, in the beginning uh, commercial barriers. And the re recent enforcement of the MEC has included in chapter 20 the new regulation of uh, intellectual rights uh, that were not contemplated in the uh, Mexican legal system, meaning that Mexico technically was behind practically for 20 years 
compared to its neighbor in the north with regards to the regulation of copyrights at digital level. In this chapter, in chapter 20 of the MEX, they regulate intellectual property at one of the intangible goods that is more in a digital environment. Here we included the in the digital area where works can be quickly reproduced without authorization. Amongst all of these uh, topic, they included dispositions as the notice and thema that were reflected later on in the reform that was in force in July, July 2nd, in the copyrights. So these have been historically implemented by the uh, titles of uh, copyrights and by IP lawyers in practice since the la ends of the late 90s in the US and all over the world, as Priscilla was saying, the fact of using a platform that establishes in its uh, terms and conditions the jurisdiction that will be applicable, this automatically links us or forces us to comply with this regulation. And these, they have been implemented in different, different digital platforms and social networks with a very specific formality of protecting copyrights and other rights of artists, interpreters, and executors in the digital environment because of immediate production. However, unfortunately, these kind of procedures have been used in abusive way to um, lower or legitimate content or related with the press freedom almost immediately. And this is in many of the cases, the situation. Many, these political actors have taken advantage of these platforms and they have started to use artificial intelligence developments in order to buy these contents and try to, to, to get the censorship, digital censorship at, through these mechanisms. These mechanisms questions the uh, protection for intellectual property. However, it is very important to establish that these mechanisms were developed to protect uh, copyright and not to be a censorship. And it has been abused by political actors, political parties, and even government entities with the only purpose of censoring the freedom of expression, which we cannot allow this. One thing is that we have developed the mechanisms in order to protect the rights that are established and that, as I mentioned, are human rights. And the other thing is that political actors will use these means to start doing censorship for the freedom of expression and press expression, which is a constitutional right. This mechanism, as I said, seems to be an arbitrary procedure for certain matters, but I think it is important anyway to discuss and avoid that these mechanisms that although they are lim the limited are used to be used within political terms or with, with the political purposes. So to continue with the discussion, I want to welcome Daniel Sanchez. Sa Daniel Sánchez Barrientos is a journalist since 1986, and between 1991 and 2004, he worked in Campeche in the regional new, uh, newspaper. Now he is uh, the... Daniel, can you give us your presentation? Daniel. Your microphone is uh, silent, Daniel. Déjame ver si yo te lo puedo. Ah, bueno, ya te lo quitaste. Bienvenido. Sí, eh, muy buenos días, compañeros. Marta Priscila Salvador. Good morning, Viviana, who's also connected there. Con nosotros. Es una especie de censura. Es una especie de censura inducida. Like an induced uh, censorship. This mechanism is being used by politicians, entrepreneurs, and companies to use what or to 
follow what they call a negative content, which is a critical content of the people where they uh, inform about corruption uh, facts. I have not been able to publish uh, a, a, the company that contracted later to do video vigilance. This was done in 2018 in the page 66.nax. Uh, this publication eluded a company that is called Interconecta Subsidiaria. This is a Spanish entrepreneurial group that has signed a contract for about two years for 2 billion pesos to provide video vigilance services in four cities of the Mexican state of Campeche that was governed by Alejandro Moreno Cárdenas, uh, the uh, prick uh, national leader. They had also found, based on data of the Federation, previous accusations of uh, fiscal fraud to other companies of the Alta Vista group that had participated in the fraud of multimedia during the government of the Vicente Fox. The worst of these is that they are consulting companies or lawyers' offices that do the appraisal of these uh, physical people and that's the way they are announced in social networks. I want to highlight that the information about this Alta Vista group and its owner, Ricardo Razos, was removed from page 66 in a fraudulent manner by a company from a uh, lawyer's uh, office that uh, attacked them in different ways until they achieved their objectives. This is one of the companies that cleans up the uh, negative content of the reputation of their clients uh, is eliminalia.com and lawyers from Spain where Alta Vista is located. After they achieved the objective of removing the information that was published in page 66 at the end of February, three months later in May, I was contacted by phone by Humberto Herrera Borgallardo asking me to remove the notes and I realized that he is participating in the DMCA, arguing that they had used his name in that case. Then we had other three months of uh, telephone harassment by Telefon Carranza, insisting to remove the information about Herrera because it was affecting his businesses. These two people said that they worked in a company that was dedicated to eliminate negative contents from the social networks. And they sent me a, wrote a note where they said that Humberto Herrera had no participation in the attempts on censorship that the information portal page 66 had been an object of. And that in the light of the facts, this is a, uh, an affection of the rights of the expression and they mentioned him and they suggest that his name was used by this uh, lawyer's office in Spain who said that they did not know the reason why they did the incorrect use of these of his name to do these censorship actions. In the last two months they stopped bothering me with the uh, calls when I told them that I was sick with COVID-19. It was true, but it was a very mild uh, contagion, but the illegal removal of content leaves sequelae, especially the irregularity that your information is going to uh, be in internet. They create an uncertainty environment, especially if you are in a, an environment as Campeche, because here, in spite of several publication of the case of the MCA in Panta 66, no other media or communicators were, were solidar solidary. We have more than 50 communication media here and internet and the government, the state government, that of Alejandro Moreno, who is a national um, um, leader of PRI, and Leonel Ariza, his person who substituted, they have dedicated a lot of money to exercise a subtle uh, censorship and uh, do not allow freedom of expression. It is very difficult to find in Mexico suppliers for internet sites. 
who do not have in their do not have their servers in the United States. It will become more difficult to keep the critical information in internet with the modification to the law of the copyright, which includes a mechanism of removal that so far it has not been removed from any of the media. The censorship will not come from the United States of America, where we have the largest suppliers, but from Mexico itself, when they add, they are joining the new uh, free trade agreement of North America. So I, is, I hope that these uh, initiatives that are being discussed in the Senate in order to draw back this which is affecting the free circulation of ideas in my country and this is how i finished my presentation thank you very much daniel thank you very much that you kept yourself in time and thank you for your uh, testimony as a journalist the next intervention will be done by viviana rangel she's a professional in government international relationships she has experience in the analysis of public policies and work and culture and working with the organizations of the civil society, she accompanied the process and she was in charge of the analysis of the behavior of a movie industry in the Ministry of Culture in Colombia. She is working with Carisma Culture. Iriana, you have seven minutes. Okay, well, good morning. Thank you very much, Article 19, for the invitation and to my panel, um, colleagues, I want to tell you that Fundación Carisma has been in the last nine years being as a leader of the civil society to resist to these pressures that have come after the treaty, the free trade agreement treaty under the United States in order to uh, apply these policies of copyright. In Colombia, there was a reform uh, to the uh, copyright law and as a civil society by 2021 we had a small gain and uh, we have been asked to come to a hearing to indicate what are the things that are in, included in this law so i want to tell you about a report made DMCA. related with the dmca which is called interesting occupation this was uh, done in this is the uh, Right. This is where we evidenced some of the problems of the contents that are, were present in social networks and in general the application of this law that are affecting the user's accounts. Uh, we did this report with the data of the 2016, so probably some of the regulations of the platforms have changed, but we believe that the conclusions in general do adjust to the needs of the moment. So we did the follow up of 11 cases of people who were intermediates of internet, Instagram, YouTube, and they were blocked or eliminated their content. And this was done in their channels. And in many of these cases, the content were their own creations and were original creations of the users. This follow-up was done through those reported in Twitter en el que todos odiamos. Además, identificaron casos de agrupaciones musicales, colectivos culturales, entre otros que pues pueden encontrar en el informe en la página de Fundación Carisma. El seguimiento de estos casos implicó conocer notificaciones recibidas, contra, contra notificaciones realizadas, la cancelación y reapertura de cuentas, entender las motivaciones de los usuarios para continuar o no continuar en el procedimiento para recuperar estos contenidos y cuentas. Eh, las posibilidades que tienen los usuarios para hacer seguimientos a sus casos, entre pues como otros aspectos. Eh, este análisis nos dio pues siete conclusiones que les queremos contar, que creemos pues que se ajustan como a las necesidades de todos los usuarios de estas redes sociales, eh, por lo menos en nuestra región. Eh, lo primero es un problema en términos de jurisdicción, el tener que aceptar iniciar una acción legal ante la jurisdicción de los tribunales estadounidenses inhibe, intimida y persuade a los usuarios para no defender sus derechos por posibles sanciones legales que impliquen gastos económicos bastante altos y la necesidad de seguir un caso legal en un idioma diferente pues, a su primera lengua. 
eh, en términos de idioma, aunque la mayoría de plataformas tiene términos y condiciones en español, se encontraron grandes problemas como el manejo del inglés al momento de recibir las notificaciones, ya que representa una barrera para el acceso de personas que no conocen el idioma y mucho menos tienen herramientas para enfrentarse a un texto jurídico pues con todos estos términos legales y técnicos en inglés. Encontramos además que para el proceso de notificación y contranotificación las plataformas no tenían estandarizado el uso de idioma español o inglés y que dentro de los casos eh, analizados existió mayor posibilidad de éxito en la contra, eh, si la contranotificación se hacía en inglés. Eh, bueno, como tercera conclusión tenemos en cuanto a la respuesta a la contranotificación, como lo establece la DMCA, las plataformas deberían enviar la notificación recibida al denunciante y esperar entre 10 y 15 días para saber si se interponen acciones ante la Corte. En caso de no hacerlo, la plataforma debe restablecer el contenido o la cuenta bloqueada. Lo que nosotros encontramos es que este proceso no es efectivo y no es usado por las plataformas. Eh, nuestra cuarta conclusión, en términos de seguimiento al procedimiento, eh, ante la ausencia de información sobre... Y antes de la ausencia de información sobre la contranotificación, encontramos que los intermediarios de Internet no tienen mecanismos de acompañamiento a las notificaciones feitas. En estos casos, si vio falta de protocolos para tornar efectiva la obligación de informar o afectado. Disculpe el barullo, pero tiene una construcción aquí. En algunos casos, el afectado notices and then receives an email from the platform informing that the, there is an in, in violation and the platform only takes the word of the holder and goes against the standard for the detriment of the person who is affected, who's not restituted the right to the content. Fifth conclusion in terms of transparency during the investigation, several concerns were sent and Twitter's response made reference to the uh, transparency report and finding counter notices related to DMCA, which can affect users. The other platforms did not answer, no, no response. So these made president the importance of these in the platforms, although the information is not sufficient or Twitter at this time of the study. The other companies were not reporting this associated information. In terms of account cancellation, a problem was found related to information regarding the number of people who reported cancellation of accounts. It's not clear how many accounts need to be reporting to close this, and we also We didn't have any documentation allowing us to know if Parece que habría un gran nivel. a high level of subjectivity, which can affect even more some people more than others and continue to violate violate rights. In terms of digital tools, intermediaries don't have any guides or tools which can facilitate these counter notices while they have of forms and many guidelines to support the processes of notices to make the report. So this has lack of balance. It's imbalanced uh, considering the capacity of the people. So these are the seven conclusions that we have from the report. And if you have any questions, we can answer them. You will find everything in the Carisma Network. Gracias, Thank you. Viviana, Thank you very much, Viviana, for sharing with us de Colombia, and creo que for sharing Colombia's perspective. If anyone has a question, please write them down in the Q&A section here. Me queda here. Como una duda de toda and esta in the meantime, I have a doubt regarding this conversation. I don't know. Who would want to 
I mean, it's not um, the same in Latin America than in the States. So what alternatives do we have in order to, as Salvador was saying, make a legitimate claim as far as intellectual property? What alternatives do we have which can serve us to generate certain types of blocks? And while this happens, the next question is, what can journalists and activists can do people who are traditionally in these groups uh, taken out from the public spaces. What can they do? What can they learn? What can they do today to defend themselves or to prevent this type of situations from happening? Who wants to answer? At random, Salvador. Let's say Salvador, can you answer? Of course, Marta, gladly. I think it's fundamental. I mean, the, the fact that, I mean, that we need to take to the courts this type of cases. The only way to fight from the legal perspective is by taking these cases to the court where it can be established that a violation took place. It's something that is very normal that we've seen. And it is that, I mean, it's just, it's not only in Mexico, but in Latin America. It's, it's like a snail. It, uh, makes progress too slow. It can take five years to solve a matter. However, this is fundamental. Another issue or something that we have recommended also is we should always answer and respond to these notices because we've seen many cases where they think, ah, I would rather open another channel. No, you need to continue with these, take it to the last instance of that DMCA process to see what happens. We totally understand also that unfortunately it is being used as a censoring means for journalistic matters which take only two days. That, that's the duration, only two days. Maybe part of my recommendation, very specific recommendation is to stop using platforms where the jurisdiction is the United States. I think that's one of the first steps. And it's also very complex because that's where you see the most, the largest variety of ways or means to get to Muchísimas where we want to. Thank you very much, Salvador. Based on the eh, second question, Daniel I would also like Daniel to tell us what his experience has esto, been in terms of learning o sea, now that this que happened que to you. What have you learned? What, what is the lesson pues si, para poder from, y from these este to be able to react and prevent this? Sí, bueno, te quedan de experiencia muchas cosas. Hay que este, tener más cuidado en manejar la información. Aunque esta información no tenía eh, de los malos antecedentes de Interconecta, que es una subsidiaria del Grupo Altavista, no tenía ninguna posibilidad de, de, de digamos, de crítica o de o, o si se había dejado algún espacio este, con el que pudieran atribuirse porque... Eh, para poder retirarlo hicieron varios intentos. Utilizaron lo de derechos de autor, utilizaron delitos de honor y supuesta, con supuestos este, legislaciones en la Unión Europea. Este, también, este, eh, o sea, el, el segundo intento de DMCA fue el que ya les funcionó. Pero el, ante la manera en que lo hicieron, pues uno se encuentra indefenso porque tú no puedes argumentar mucho eh, eh, con lo del DMCA porque, por ejemplo, nosotros respondimos a todas las solicitudes que nos hizo la empresa proveedora que es Digital Ocean, una empresa de Estados Unidos. Eh, y the United States. And despite all this, They removed us from the page completely. Uh, they downloaded us in three days. I mean, they removed and then is us in three days. They removed the news on this. We haven't been able to upload it again. So that's the issue. I mean, everyone, I mean, Mr. Humberto Herrera, Herrera, is extracted the note I published in January the way it was they didn't make any change they used the same picture and that's how they 
presented this uh, before the DMCA saying that the author was Humberto Herrera, even with credits. I mean, uh, the note itself in their own site, they created something called Harding. MRX, algo assim. E apesar disso, o MCA retirou a informação. Proceeded. I mean, the problem is that this, I mean, in spite of, you know, being very careful in the content you produce, they can apply the, the DMCA because there's no legal, effective legal defense. So that's what I think I can Muchas say gracias, in Daniel. this regard. Eh, Thank you very bueno, much, Daniel. Me a Viviana, I would also like to ask Viviana. She told us a bit about the lessons learned, but I would like to know within mapeo, the charisma digamos, experience si what's the mapping of the topics and if, if it corresponds to certain groups that might have been ignored i would like to better understand the content aspect well this report was prepared in 2016 and follow-up was conducted on content having to do with some particular soccer game where or championship where people were uploading the recordings, their own recordings. That on the one hand, we continued monitoring these topics and during the pandemic, we have now developed, uh, or we have been developing a line of work called, uh, called Neocultura with digital content projects uh, in the creative and cultural aspect of the country. So allowing them to tell us about these pro problems within the framework of uh, film making many networks um, continued you know sending information they were exhibiting movies or films of the public domain inviting the director but the platforms block this we've had cases of radio stations community neighborhood stations which in within the framework of the pandemic was were like the only means of, for people to communicate and they also have problems there with copyrights. The same has happened with literature, storytelling in platforms, reading out loud different uh, literary work they had that generated also copyright problems. Uh, there was a case last year of a deaf and deaf um, a person, a YouTuber in, in, in sign language, uh, people who traditionally listen to music can become familiar with their language and they don't want to be restricted in their possibilities of interaction. He's also been blocked in the platform. So that continues to happen in the legislation. There were some changes recently prohibiting in Instagram the movement of many video clips and presentations of artists who were using these platforms for dissemination. So we are continuing with our analysis. We need to, I mean, we're constantly monitoring and we try to pick up on some cases and provide tools to society to be able to put pressure upon some kind of change. Muchísimas That's gracias, what we're after. Thank you very much, Viviana. I think it is also very comparable, very comparable with the situation in Mexico. Maybe we have some differences, but in the end, these type of mechanisms are applicable everywhere, depending on who wants to use them, et cetera. Now, Priscila, I would like you to please share what has Article 19 done in, in this regard and what's the process behind it, the campaigns that we're carrying out to make this visible. Thank you, Marta. Well, the truth is we made a campaign as far as the content removal. Obviously, one of the figures is notice and removal. Two months ago, we launched a campaign called Freedom Not Available. I mean, the objective of this campaign is to be able to inform society and make visible these removals of content that is uh, the 
subject matter of journalists in any type of context where the terms and conditions are used and they also use these in certain provisions. They use some kind of mechanism to be able to uh, demand them to be removed, whether by some kind of authority or company or external character. So with Article 19, we want the entire society to be informed of what content removal is, the type of content that exists, and we're very open to receiving those cases of journalists and activists and human rights, even from the civil society who have had this type of removals or who have suffered these experience. Everything is in our web page. You can find everything there, the campaign of Libertad No Disponible or Non Available Freedom. Thank you very much, Priscila. Now I give the word to Carolina Botero. Six minutes left. So Carolina, please be brief. Thank you very much. Hello, thank you very much. Yes, the question I have is also uh, very complete with the journalist. When we looked at or analyzed this topic in Colombia, we thought that was going to be one of the big risks. I had not heard of a case like that one. The questions I had, he almost all of them answered all of them. But I wanted to ask if he has been documenting somewhere and what type of actions. Bueno, sí, este, el caso no tiene documentado artículo. El caso está en artículo. By Article 19, which has supported us from the beginning. Apart from this, if you want to consult any of the publications made, there's página 66.mx. There we conduct follow-up on the progress made in the case, the reports, and the attempts made before achieving their goal or attaining their goal. These are the sources that you can consult. Muchísimas gracias, Carolina. Thank you very much, Daniel. Carolina. Ahora nos quedan cinco minutos. Me we have five que minutes left, and I would like each nos dar una idea con la person cual to give us an idea este, with which you want puede ser algún uh, to leave lección, before, puede ser you know, to take from this session and take with us one sentence, in one sentence, as brief as possible, eh, because we're about to finish. So I'm going to go backwards. Viviana, let's start with Viviana. One sentence that you can take away from this session. Well, we always recommend to be on guard all the time, be attentive all the time, follow the procedure, let's get together and document these cases because we believe that collective pressure is the key in this aspect. We have a survey to look at all these topics of censor and uh, content removal. We can send you the link and leave it available so you can be part of all this. But in, in the end, it's the collective pressure that we can Muchísimas exert. Gracias, Thank eh, you very Daniel. much, Viviana. Daniel, a phrase. The only thing I would expect is for civil society in Mexico and associations in Mexico to put pressure upon the Chamber of Senators uh, that are currently discussing alternatives of what they already um, tried out in June and July with respect to federal law of copyrights to hopefully have some mechanism to, for the defense of the content that we have mainly in news types of places. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you. Well, I think it's fundamental to proceed to litigation processes. These need to be taken to court and put pressure, you know, through these mechanisms to attain what we've always wanted, a, a balance between freedom of expression and freedom uh, for authors. Thank you very much. Priscila, your last. Well, I wanted to thank all activists, journalists who have contributed 
so that this guideline can become one of the first documents to be able to implement a policy within our countries and to become a voice for all Latin America uh, in the sense that they're applying, you know, DMCA issues and also for them to find this guideline as a fundamental tool to be able to continue striving for freedom of expression and digital rights. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Eh, no, thank pues you very sí, much. no me queda más que agradecerles a las personas que estuvieron de panelistas y también a las personas panelists, que estuvieron the people eh, de atendiz. Who, um, eh, muchísimas gracias. Eh, ojalá que nos thank podamos ir con varias ideas Hopefully y llamarnos a la acción que podamos materializar. Y me queda claro que es un tema session. que vamos a seguir explorando porque sigue habiendo muchísimas leyes, no solamente sobre propiedad intelectual, pero ideas, etcétera, que importamos de otros países con otros contextos cuando los aplicamos a la realidad de América Latina terminan por perjudicarnos. Así que, de nuevo, muchísimas gracias y eh, les invito a seguir la conversación, a seguir compartiendo contenidos y pues nos vemos. Un gusto. Adiós. Hasta luego. Adiós.